So hey friends, welcome to this week's video. Pardon the Shikamaru ponytail, but my hair guy is not back yet, um, but he will be shortly. So I'll be back to normal hairstyle. Um, but yeah, I just got tired of headbands. I want to switch it up a little bit. Similar to switching it up, um, I am trying to you know expand on what I am reviewing on this channel. So it's very tech focused, focused recently, and I love tech. However, I do want to make sure I can kind of sap in a few different things here and there that kind of get away from that. And for me, I'm big on style and fashion as well as, you know, sneaker culture, sort of streetwear culture. So I want to kind of dabble into pieces of that occasionally. Not going to be like a whole like transformation of this channel, but just, you know, throw in some different looks every now and then. So this is probably the first review around that uh, that you'll see. But I hope you guys enjoy it anyway. Um, but it was really inspired by me watching one of my favorite sneaker YouTubers, uh, Seth Fowler. He's grown pretty big over the last few years. And I, I generally follow him just to make sure I know what releases are coming out. And again, while I call myself a sneakerhead, I'm not a crazy sneakerhead where I am willing to spend $500,000 on resale, stand out outside in line, stuff like that. I will get sneakers as they become available. I'll try to go onto the, you know, the websites and win there usually else, um, but I'll also try to, you know, just find resale that makes sense for me. So like, you know, I'll spend 220, 250 to get like a Jordan 1, but I'm not gonna go like dramatically crazy and spend 350 or more on a sneaker. So um, generally, I don't have a lot of those. However, I've been lucky in the past and uh, before sort of more of the hype came through and I've been able to accumulate a, a significant size collection of Jordans, mostly Jordan 1s. And Seth putting out this video around the Doras was actually the reason why it was super interesting to me. And that's because of the fact that the Diodoras kind of are similar to the Jordan 1s. And that is my predominant sneaker that I have in my collection. They're not the most comfortable, but I do like them for fashion and streetwear because they do get better over time. I'm not, a, again, I'm not a crazy sneakerhead. I do not care about creases. I think creases create character. I think scuffs create character. I like my shoes looking worn in because it looks like mine and it looks a little bit more vintage. And I like that look. There are a few sneakers like that I have like my Spider-Man AJ ones that I really don't wear, I rarely wear, I want those to stay new. But for the most part, I beat up my, my other Jordans and they're part of my collection. And whether they're highs, lows, mids, see, I am not a crazy sneakerhead. I like mids for certain instances, especially with suits. I try to bring it into work. Mids are great for suits. Um, many people may not agree, but that's where I am at. Um, so Jordans are a big part of my life in terms of my sneaker life. but. Bringing up Diadora, Seth made me think about other brands that have a similar silhouette that may have a decent offering. So in his video, he goes over what's cool about it, how it's very similar, the different materials they use. And I'm gonna go over some of the very similar stuff in this video. However, I do wanna say that I kinda went all in just to go get a few different colorways. I did notice that he was a little bit dissatisfied with the colorway that he liked, that he picked up even though I liked it. However, um, through my journey on this, I picked up a few colorways to help drive that decision. And hopefully it helps you with your decision around the Adoras themselves. The Adora is a brand made by, uh, I think 1948, something like that, like my dad's birthday basically, um, by someone named Marcelo Daniela. And it's been a pretty popular brand abroad. So like in Europe, it's been good. I know a lot of my German friends know it and they kind of pride themselves on craftsmanship and um, they have, you know, they, they kind of use the original materials, you know, very solid materials. And that's the reason why they have that quality standard that's associated with their name. Don't get me wrong, they have a bunch of different lines, just like any other sneaker, like their, their sportswear lines use like a little bit more updated materials, a little bit more updated cushions. However, they do have a heritage line, which these ones kind of fall into. So the Mi Basket line um, used, they're, they're not used, they just look used, is in that heritage line and it's, look, it's supposed to look a heritage. Like you got this from your grandfather and you're re-rocking re it, you're retroing it and you're bringing it back. And I like that aesthetic and I think that's the reason why these, despite some people thinking they look trash, I think they look dope. So let me bring out some of the colorways that I picked up. So I picked up the Nugget colorway, which is the colorway that Seth picked up. Um, I picked up the mint and browns. 
Um, this one was suggested by my Puerto Rican friends because they love mint. Wow, that's super expo overexposed. And then just, I went with a really, really retro one, which is like an off-white. Uh, geez, finding space on this table is rough. <laughs> Some like off-white and pink ones. I going to show you guys these in a better light because wow these are over exposed in this natural sunlight but yes three colorways we're gonna go over them uh so let's start right now so i stop blinding you guys the me baskets were designed in 1984 in occasion of the milan basketball team sponsorship they feature a full green leather upper and come in nine colorways for this 2021 season colorways do phase out so make sure you grab them when you like them before the season is over the silhouette, toe box, and color blocking definitely have Jordan 1 vibes. The toe box does seem to be a bit smaller than the Jordan 1, but not terribly noticeable. Overall, I think the shoe fits true to size for the most part. I will say that I quite like the laces because they have a nice texture and heft to them in comparison to the standard AJ1 laces. The Mi Baskets use a special stonewash treated leather to give the shoe its vintage looks. As a result, each shoe will look slightly different with different aging characteristics. I mean, they have used in the name, so expect some discoloration and scuffs in the uppers. I think this is well done, but it's not for everyone, I get that. Depending on the colorway, you will also get varied ranges of aging, as shown with the nuggets, which look relatively new on the upper. Moving on to the sole, it's a rubber sole. <laughs> Nothing special. I do like how the traction pattern kind of looks like coffee beans, especially on the brown version. It's a consistent pattern no matter what colorway you pick, but the color will switch up depending on which colorway you get. So you'll get blacks, blues, reds, just depends on which one you decide on. On the inside of the shoe, there's literally nothing. <laughs> no tags, no markings. It's just a cushion collar and tongue. You do have a nice stitched logo on the outside of the tongue, but on the inside, it's just pristine white. No fading here. The key thing to note is that the insole is removable and quite thin. However, it does seem that you get a different experience based on what colorway you get. Here, you see that the brown colorway on the left has a much more contoured insole than the nugget colorway. I'm not sure if it's shoe to shoe, but I did notice that the nugget kind of got the short end of the stick between the colorways that I got. We'll definitely get more into the colorway differences in the next part of this review. All right, now that you've kind of seen that montage and gotten a little bit more intimate look about the different characteristics of the Diodora Mi Baskets, the reason why we need to come back and revisit them together is because there is a slight difference based on the colorway that you get. And again, I don't have enough of these where I can tell you if it's shoe to shoe or colorway by colorway. It's definitely model by model. But if you guys have had Jordan 1s in the past, obviously like material switch based off the collaboration or, you know, the hype between the shoe, again, the limitedness of the colorway, you may see different quality quality leather such as like the shattered backboards have really soft leather in comparison to the other jordan ones out there again if you talk to rose anvil watch his videos he'll cut those shoes in half he'll cut off he'll cut in half the most expensive jordans that you can find and show you that that leather is not all that that great however um you know it's still a style and a fashion staple so we still wear them and we don't want to spend all that money on like pure you know like crazy leather but Diodora may give you sort of a middle ground to give you a little bit better leather. However, again, we are back here to say that the fit and everything is just a little bit different between the colorways from what I've seen. Less, less consistent than what you would see in the Jordan. So let's start with the Nugget colorway. So this is the colorway that um, Seth brought up. And I think um, when you look at it closer, um, there's just three different patches of materials here. Um, so on the medial side, there is the, 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 just the regular leather. And again, it's pretty supple on the, the cream parts, but for me, it's more supple along the toe box and a little bit more rugged, um, in the, the sections between the logo. And then the logo on the nuggets doesn't seem like leather. It seems a little bit more synthetic. So whatever in terms of that is going on, um, they're just switching materials there, um, on the logo but again if you look at the sort of the collar of the shoe that that black leather becomes more like the toe box and that that smoothness of the leather that you're seeing so from here it's just a more stiff leather than the rest of the other shoes so it 
right when I stepped into it, it wasn't as comfortable. Um, I actually felt it bottom out. Um, and the insole just seems a lot harder or thinner, depending on how you look at it. Um, there wasn't a lot of great things I felt when I started punching out on it. And um, yeah, it just kind of felt like a weightlifting shoe that like one of those wooden weightlifting shoes where there's just no padding and you're just feeling everything. Like I swear I felt the hardwood when I was just walking around on it. So that was a little bit jarring to me when I was expecting a little bit of step in comfort. Again, not a ton, because again, Jordans don't have great, great comfort, but this one just felt very stiff and very hard and it didn't seem to break in even after a week. So I would be a little bit concerned on this and maybe this is the reason why Seth found a quirk with it just because of the fact that it was so rough and tumbly and just not very molded. It was also looser than the other one, so there seemed to be a different, maybe it's because of the materials, they just felt a little bit looser. So yeah, those are the nuggets. If we move on to um, the creams, um, or the off-whites, they're, yeah, they're really off-white, they're not cream. Um, they do have a little bit different materials. Um, so on the sole, you'll notice that it's a lot more clean than, or less clean than the Nuggets. So these ones have a definitely faded outsole. Um, and it has, it literally looks like it's dirty. <laughs> and I think this is the reason why some of my friends were like, no, don't pick that shoe. But to me, I kind of like that kind of vintage look and it fit in very well with the off-white nature of the color. And this off-white, I don't know if it's because of the pink logo, but it does look a little bit pinkish. And that, I kind of that's the reason why I kind of liked it. it. It wasn't a cream, it was like a pinkish off-white, which was just a very different aesthetic when you get to look at it. And it's really, really pretty. Um, in terms of the materials, it is more consistent throughout than the Nuggets. So the toe box and the, um, the sort of outriggers, the collar, all of it is pretty much the same material no matter where you feel. The only difference is potentially in the logo itself. So the logo has this sort of ribbed leather or leatherette there, but it does feel a lot less synthetic than what I saw on the Nuggets. When I put into, when I stepped into the shoe, it was a lot more form fitting and it hugged my foot and it felt like love. To be honest, it literally felt like love. And I was like, wow, this is nice. And um, yeah, again, like I wasn't expecting to have a bunch of spring to it, a bunch of step in comfort, but I think it just was a lovely hug for my foot and it was a pleasant experience to walk around. Of the three, this is probably the most comfortable of all of them. Um, and it's just, I think it's just because the materials kind of cave to your foot a little bit more. You can even see just here on the medial side on the right foot, um, you can just see like it kind of was already pre-creased and how, how kind of like giving that leather is. I mean, it still does have the, the, with the heel counter in there, but it all feels very, very nice. Um, so this is one of my favorites of the three I got. And then finally, we come to the brown and mints. And these ones I think most of my friends liked the most. And um, I think it's just a very striking color combination. And I thought it was gonna look really, really bad and kind of poopy <laughs> when I saw it online. However, I'm glad I got these because in hand, these look beautiful. And um, in terms of materials, you still get the supple all around. Um, I will say the toe box and uh, the outer toe, the outer toe guard here, the, the toe guard is much softer than all of the other shoes here, um, but it's about the same in terms of the toe box itself as well as the sort of collar material. Um, so there are certain areas here in, in the shoe, mostly the brown ones, that seem a little bit more supple than everything else. Um, but overall, I think it's beautiful. I like the fact that it has the brown outsole on this one to sort of complement it. So it's not just standard, they do switch it up colorway to colorway and I think that's nice. Um, but very similarly to the off-white ones, this one had nice step in comfort. Um, it didn't hug as tightly or as, as nicely as the off-white ones for some reason, but even when you like, you know, even when you strap them in and you lace them tightly, I, I didn't have that same sort of loving feel, but it was still comfortable. Um, it was way more comfortable than the Nuggets and way more forgiving. Um, and so that's the reason why I was really happy I picked this. Initially, I was not going to but thanks to my friends, kind of helped me with this one. Um, there's not much more to say about this besides the fact that as we get and revisit these, for me to give you a better understanding of how these were sort of day in life, I gotta pick one. 
And that's because I'm not gonna keep three of the same shoe, even though I kind of want to. No, no, definitely not this one. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I do want to return two of them, save some money, you know. I don't want to just splurge on shoes all the time. Definitely not picking the nuggets. These feel like trash. However, these, this is very hard. This is very, very hard to me. This is aesthetically great, has some nice comfort, but this is the most comfortable of the Diodorus I found and more comfortable than some of the Jordans that I have. Um, so I think this is great. Um, but the reason why I am going with this is because one, my friends are beautiful and they give me good suggestions on shoes. Thank you, Evies. Um, but this one, I have a special bond with this one just because it reminds me of a shoe that my dad had. Um, but the reason why I'm not doing this is because I think if I look at what I have in my wardrobe, this doesn't match as well with certain things and it would just really be a summer shoe. And at that point, if it's a summer shoe, it should be short or it should not be a high top because I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm 5'10", you know, I'm pretty average height. Um, but wearing these with shorts just would make me look shorter. So um, yeah, I would just uh, prefer a low cut. And luckily they do. So if you are like me and you see a colorway that you like, but you want it in a low cut or you like the shoe, but you want a low cut, um, Diodora has a something they call a row cut, um, which is basically this the low top version of this. Um, they are limited in sizes right now. And that's the reason why I don't have that right now. Otherwise I would have bought it, but um, I am going to reserve my money, not get these. And hopefully those row cuts will come in off white in my 10.5 size and I can pick them up. But for now, I'm gonna do my best to hold back and return these and just commit to this shoe here. Um, so the mitten brown ones are the ones I'm gonna go with and that's what you will be seeing in the rest of this review um, in relation to me walking around Boston. However, I do wanna make a caveat here of that these shoes are more expensive than Jordans retail, obviously. Um, so these come in anywhere between 170 and 210, I think, or 200. So a decent chunk of change more. However, one, you'll always be able to, for the most part, you'll always be able to get these colorways. So that's a benefit because you won't have to play resale on this because no one really knows about them. Um, as well as there's some other hacks that you can do to get these cheaper. So this is what I used to get my sneakers is I bought everything that I wanted um, I signed up for their accounts, like I signed an account for them before I checked out, and then I kind of abandoned my cart. I just left it full and then let it sit for a bit. After about an hour, two hours, a little bit, you know, some, some time passed, and they sent me an email saying, hey, did you forget something? And it was my cart, and they gave me a 15% uh, off code that I could use. It's so one-time use, obviously, uh, but I leveraged that to get these shoes cheaper. So depending on the model, again, for some reason, the nuggets are the most expensive, should not be. Um, but yeah, like you can get these for like as low as like, I think it's like 130 or 120 was the, the cheapest one of the, the three that I got here. So you can make these as cheap as an inter, intro level boost shoe and cheaper than a retail Jordan one. So I think that is a great way to do this um, and approach the shoe because we don't have a lot of retailers that can ha that have these shoes and to try them on and do all that sort of stuff. So my suggestion would be, you know, get a couple colorways, get a couple sizes if you're kind of in between, um, and then use that checkout hack. Also check for promo codes. They definitely have those floating around. The example is this DAD B Day 20. We'll give you 20% off now, and that's currently active. But also don't forget to buy multiple sneakers just to get over that sort of free shipping hump. Shipping can be kind of expensive because it's coming from abroad. <laughs> but if you loop in a couple sneakers that are on sale, you can always return the other one and then you won't get charged that uh, shipping fee. So that's one way to get around the expensive shipping costs. And then also leverage their return policy. So they allow you to return the shoes up to 14 days from the receipt of the package. And if you are unfamiliar with DHL, they use DHL returns. So this is where you just use your way bill number that they give you on the pre-package or the pre-postage. Um, schedule a pickup, pack everything up, put that sticker on it, and then give it to the DHL guy um, whenever you schedule that pickup. Again, it's a little bit different than just what UPS and, and USPS would do where you drop it off. You still can drop it off at a DHL location. Just unfortunately here in Boston, that DHL location is in the middle of nowhere. So picking up is easier for me. So 
it is a little bit different. It could be more convenient for you depending on what's, what's happening, but that's another way that I would say like, use the hack, use the return policy, get and understand what you need and then pick your favorite ones. And I think it's a little bit fun because you get to try in a bunch of stuff and then you know you save money by not having buyer's remorse. So I think so. I hope you guys leverage that as much as possible. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was important when I was checking stuff around. I mean, besides the fact that they're a little bit low on stock for their low cut stuff, they definitely have like, you know, they have, um, they have t-shirts, they have a bunch of other gear that you can check out. You can try check out their non-heritage line, which is a little bit more performance based. Um, but the heritage line is where I'm locked in right now. Uh, and I think, yeah, we, let's get into the walk around Boston take on these shoes. Okay, so pose the vault here. Um, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to make this into a first impressions that really just focuses on the materials, the company a little bit, and the colorway considerations when you're buying. Um, the next video will be going into like sort of walking around how this thing feels after a couple of weeks and how it breaks in, um, and then my final recommendations. Um, but yeah, you'll see it all in this shoe in the mint. Spoiler alert, I am keeping the pinks as well, or the off-whites, because of the fact that I actually talked to Diodora, and they are not coming back with the off-white version of the row cuts. So, like I said earlier in this review, if you like a colorway, grab it, because once the season's over, they're going to be gone. They probably won't reintroduce them for a while, um, at least from what they told me. So, that's just another consideration as you're looking at these shoes. Anyway, I hope you guys have been enjoying the new content. Uh, again, it's a little bit a departure from what we normally do, but I hope you enjoyed it and it's a little bit more casual too because uh, I'm trying to be less informative and more of a vibe, but uh, let me know what you think. Um, any suggestions again in the comments is lovely. Um, if you're new here, consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And if you're returning, hope you like what this, this new stuff is and that you guys get to know a little bit more about me. But uh, anyway, always appreciate the engagement. I will get that other video up shortly where I'll have probably a longer outro shouting some of you guys out. But uh, appreciate the views and the engagement so far. And uh, always, as always, appreciate you. <laughs> See you soon. Peace.